Hey guys, welcome back. Last week we added a freeze effect by changing the texture and stopping the animation in place. This week we're going to improve the experience by adding some effects. When I first started using the gameplay ability system, I used gameplay cues for everything, but then I realized they added a lot of needless replication. So let's talk about how to optimize our effects. A quick reminder on network optimization. Remember, if we replicate less, we get more players per server. If we replicate more, we get less players per server. Even if we don't need a high player count per server, network optimization still reduces our server hosting costs. So this is really important and is something we should strive to do. Let's not waste replication. Here's our plan for optimizing effects. The best thing we can do usually is to put our effects in our animation montages. That's what they're for. That's why it's called a montage. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So if we open an animation montage, you can see that we have this notify track. And if we go and right click, we can, we can move here to find the spot. Let's say we want it like right about there. And so we can go and we can go here and we can say add notify and you can see that we can play a sound we can play a particle effect or we can play a niagara particle effect right and so if we pick one of these then we can go click on it and we can put what particle effect we want right and so we basically use this as a montage we can time all these things out it's easier for us easy for us to get them at just the right spot and this costs us no additional replication costs let me show you why if we go into one of our gameplay abilities, we can see that it has a play montage and wait. This is where we would pick our animation montage. As part of this node, it's already replicating that montage, meaning additional things that we add inside the montage do not cost any additional replication. This is why this is the best way to do it as long as we're using an animation montage and we can put stuff in it. But there might be some cases where that doesn't work. The next method is to have our effects trigger from existing gameplay tags, right? We don't have to add anything new that replicates, but if we already have a gameplay tag that's replicating, we can just trigger off that. And that's actually what we're going to do today. Let's see how that works. So if you remember from last week, we have this frozen tag changed. This fires on the server and clients when the frozen tag is added or removed, right? So we've got this tag handler. It's already being replicated because the gameplay tag is already being replicated. And we know whether it was being removed or whether it's being added. So what we did here is we came down and said, okay, well, we don't want this to run on the server. So we say not has authority and then it'll only run on owning and proxy clients. And then we call you gameplay static spawn emitter attach, right? And so here's the effects we're gonna play. We're attaching it to the mesh and we're hooking it to the root and we're giving it an offset of zero a rotation of zero and we're saying keep a relative offset and then of course we're auto destroying it when it's done and so what this is doing is it doesn't have any additional replication because it was already going to call this frozen tag changed handler when the gameplay tag replicates and we needed that for the other things we were doing with you know stopping the movement stopping the animation and changing the texture. So this is going to have no additional cost as far as replication and our network optimization. The other thing that we could potentially do ends up being the same kind of thing as an animation montage, but when we might not have an animation montage. And that is that we might have to trigger our effects on a delay, right? This could be combined with triggering on a gameplay tag. Maybe there's a gameplay tag, tag that triggers, but we don't want the effect to play right when the gameplay tag triggers, but there is a known offset, right? We always know that, okay, when something happens, half a second later, trigger this effect, or you know, a second later, trigger this effect. And so as long as it's a known amount and it's always the same, that we can tie that to some other event that's already replicated, then we get that for free. The fourth one is the case, and this does happen occasionally, where something is not a fixed amount, right? It's not that we know off of some other already replicated event when to play this effect. 
we need to use the gameplay queue and we need to actually spend the additional replication because it's based on something that happens on the server, right? That the client could not have known about in advance, right? The server triggered something, something additional happened, a, a player made some choice that could have happened in some range of time, not a fixed time, and then that needs to get replicated out to proxy clients so that they can see this effect play. And so there, there is a case for gameplay cues, and we'll take a look at that in a future video. Let's take a look at how this new effect looks with our freezing effect. Okay, so we're going to trigger the freeze just like we did last week with our freezing reaction. But we're gonna watch closely because an effect is going to play. Now it might be a little bit hard to see it. It's 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 kind of subtle, um, but here we go. Say so you mostly can see that there's like a, you know, some puffs of, I guess, water droplets in our case that it's it's kind of going out from it, and uh, it just kind of kind of makes it seem like something's happening. I think we're also going to want to add one when it unfreezes. Uh, so I'm looking for a good effect uh, to trigger that way, but. Um, for now, this is what we've got, and it's not costing us anything extra in replication. Let's take a look at how it's set up in our blueprints. So the new effect is in our HW assets here under particles, ice, and it is the Aurora decoy spawn. So this is what it's playing, and that's the effect that we're, we're using. I pulled that over from Paragon Aurora. And then what we're doing is in our mob. Now this is temporary. At some point, we're gonna create some kind of data asset to keep track of all of these effects, textures, other things that need to be shared. Uh, but for now, just to get this working, what I have done is on our mob, we have created a a pointer here to our U particle system, and we've got start freezing effect, and there it is. One of the things I'd like to do in the future, um, though I'm not very good with Niagara, but I'd like to convert some of these to Niagara, but for now, because they came from Paragon, we're using the old system. So this is where we set what we're gonna use for a start freezing effects, and later I'll add one for an end freezing effect once I find one and get it imported into the project. And so then that is what our code is gonna pick up and apply. So if we need to change it, we just come in here, pick a different one, and then that's what it's going to use. Now, of course, right now, this is on a per mob. You can see here it's on this test mob. I think that what we'll do in the future, like I said, is have some kind of data asset that all the mobs go look at and pull in, uh, just some easier to share settings um, between things and have more global settings. So that's how we're configuring that. It's just picking that up and playing it. If you have any questions related to this video, please leave your questions in the comments section. The Open World Server and Hub World MMO Discord link is in the video description if you want to discuss something in the video further. Like and subscribe to be notified of future videos and to help with the algorithm. Until next time, have a good one.